Okay, well, fantastic to meet you both. I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Um, maybe you could just start by telling me about Small Town Crime. People who haven't seen the film, what's yeah. it about? Yeah, uh, Small Town Crime uh, stars John Hawks, Anthony Anderson, and Octavia Spencer. Uh, also, um, Clifton Collins Jr. And uh, you it's, went, it's a crime th thriller. It's a crime thriller. Yeah. Uh, it's basically about an alcoholic ex-cop who finds a dead body and becomes obsessed with finding the killer. Yeah. It's a redemption story. Yeah. So it's for kids, really. <laughs> <laughs> and what was it about this story that you wanted to make a film? Why did you want to put this on the big screen? Um, it's interesting. We love, uh, we've always loved noirs and crime thrillers. One of our biggest influences is like Eastwood's Dirty Harry series. Um, our mom had a, uh, a, she would get a subscription to it. Real affection for yeah. Clint Eastwood. And so we would get a new fr a Clint Eastwood classic every other week. From the Clint Eastwood collection. And so we would get either that be like Magnum Force, you know. Iger Sanction. Sudden Impact. Dirty uh, Harry. Yeah, it was. It was this. Um, I mean, Ian and I would watch them endlessly, and yeah, I think that was arm. that definitely had an influence and resonated. Yeah. Really screwed us up as kids. <laughs> <as well. laughs> uh, I think that had a great impact and motivation for this. Um, Ian, Ian and I both love George Pelicanos. Yeah, he's a novelist. Great novelist. Um, you could even get chap back down into like comic books of Sam and Twitch. So I think all of those sort of influences rattling around yeah. in our brain. It sounds like a lot, but it, what we've realized is that your sort of voice or your script or how you write or how you make art always is sort of an amalgam of everything that you love, you know, and then you sort of twirl it all around, yeah. spit it back out as what you want to see. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those are probably our biggest influences. And then, then, and then directly, we were driving, we were on a road trip from yeah. my parents' house to L.A. It was we about went, three hours. Yeah, three we went hours. through the humble, oil-rich town of Bakersfield, and we thought to ourselves, what if some guy got blasted, drunk, and then just woke up in the middle of one of these oil fields and found a body on his drive home? And became obsessed with figuring out. Yeah, like, and, that so that, and that was the leaping off point. <clears throat> that was the impetus for the idea. And you two being brothers, having to work together, you know, like how's that partnership? You know, how do you collaborate? Uh, it's good. I'm, I mean, we love to hold hands while we're directing. Most That's of the time. That's the best part about it, really. <laughs> Warm hands. <laughs> Um, no, it's good. Uh, we've, you know, we grew up together, so uh, we've always gotten along. Uh, we lived in the middle of nowhere, so it was either get along or have a lonely existence. <laughs> yeah, be, or be really, really, yeah, exactly, lonely. Yeah. Um, and then we have similar tastes, but different skill sets. Like he went to college on for fine, fine painting and art, um, and I went to college on a wrestling scholarship, but my focus was literature and, and theater. Um, so we definitely approached the medium initially uh, probably differently is where he came from a very visual take and I came from a very literal take um, and of course we sort of grow working with each other and picking up things from other people but yeah I think with each project we become more and more dysfunctionally codependent on one yeah, another absolutely um, yeah we love using each other's strengths where if you know if he definitely has an eye for shots and color and um, I don't know. It's, We're still yeah. figuring out what you're doing. I'm still figuring out what I'm trying to do. <laughs> he There's just, a compliment happening on my side. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's, it's honestly, great. it's a blessing, and, yeah. and I don't know how non-duo teams even do it. Mm. Um, because so much work. Yeah, <laughs> to, to be able to divide and conquer. I mean, Ian will run around and do so, You know, we'll be doing, dividing up units. Like one of us will go grab yeah. one unit, the other one. If we one get behind or we have to double up on something, I'll take a camera and I'll run off and shoot something while he's running. I'm shoot something and then. It's great because, I mean, all we have to do is sort of, uh, you know, quickly chat before or quickly chat afterwards and we're both sort of on the same page and it's like, okay, boom, we can just separate, come back and divide and conquer. Yeah, and the, <laughs> and the writing process is, is really, I really enjoy the collaboration because we're both, neither of us will move on until we're both happy with it. Yeah. And that's such a tremendous asset because you really never get in your own way when you have someone else collaborating and keeping you in check. So I will say yeah. the one thing that has to happen in that process is you have to have a similar idea or taste to begin with because... It could be very, I don't know, it could be very contentious sure. relationship as like, no, I want to see this, I want to see that, and we're making different movies and we're fighting about it, but thankfully we grew up together and watched the same movies and loved the same movies and, you know, for usually the same reasons, so when we're trying to put down something on paper, it's it's real easy to sort of say, ah, da, 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 and then, you know, that's a shorthand and we have it down and we understand what we're, what we're going for. Yeah. So, no big rows, no squabbles. Well, there are probably, but it's yeah. usually in the writing process that yeah. we battle it out. We wrestle around and figure out what we're going to do. Yeah, there'll do. be a couple lines where it's like, what? Well, not a great line. Like, well, what if it's like this? And it's like, well, if it's like that. Okay, you deliver like we, that. Yeah, we figure it out. By the time we get to the set, we've got it all dialed in, and we're both hive mining about it. Yeah. He's so. also a professional storyboard artist, uh, which helps a ton, if you can imagine, as you know, he storyboards out every day before we go out. Um, and then we hand it to every key member and cast member that's on that day, and 
and it's pretty self-explanatory as to what we're shooting. So no one's like, "What am I? Where's the camera? What am I? Is a big long white?" Uh, so yeah, it's it's a great relationship. And I think John had some more questions. John Hawks, and he yeah. he, he tested. He told us he tested it. Uh, we didn't know class. this till the Q and A. Yeah, he was like, I went, up, "I went up and asked <laughs> Eshin a question." And then I went back and I asked Ian the same question three minutes oh, later, yeah. and he's all, and they gave the same th same answer, so I knew we were in good place, good spot. <laughs> you passed the test. And so coming to the cast, you know, it's quite you've got lots of people there: John Hawks, Octavia Spencer. How was it to, in the casting process, and how was it working with? It was these a actors? pretty amazing process. Uh, Octavia was the first one on, and she also is an executive producer on the project. Um, and she was the first one on, and she was like, "All right, bring me your list. Bring me your list of who you want for this." Um, and we all landed on John Hawks on that yeah. list, and it was like she's like I've done two movies with him, and I've never had a scene like, and he's amazing. Like we have to get him for this, and we were like, yes, awesome. Um, so John is a bit of a luddite. He does not have. He doesn't embrace technology. Yeah. So he doesn't have email. He doesn't, doesn't have a email. smartphone. Yeah. You carry a pigeon. Or? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, we, we ultimately faxed him a letter through his publicist, <laughs> and uh, Octavia sent him the letter, and it said, John. We've done two movies together. We've never had a scene together. Let's remedy this. Uh, I love this project. I love these guys. I love you. We all love you for the project. All I'm going to say is we play brother and sister. Drop the mic, slid it to him. John's like, I have to read it at that point. Uh, it was and a very luckily he loved it. Yeah, yeah. He's like, it's a very different movie than I thought it was going to be, but I, I was, I was happy. <laughs> um, and then after that, she was like, All right, who do you want for my husband? Who do you want for? And our, we were like, Anthony Anderson is our number one. Um, because you instantly have to be endeared to this guy yeah. in, within five scenes. You, know? yeah. and you so, have to love him so that by the end, when it kind of tips, uh, you have to really care about him because he gets put in jeopardy at one point, and that's sort of the whole crux of the emotional pull of the film. And um, Anthony was concerned because, or I'm sorry, Octavia was concerned because Anthony's you know blackish. Yeah. He's a very busy man, and she's like, oh, I, don't I don't know if we can get him. I don't know if we can get him. And then she was like, But you know what? We get our nails done at the same salon. Let me see if I can get a hold of him. So she called us like a week later, and she's like, He's in. Anthony's He's in. in. Anthony's in. Uh, and from those three, we were rolling. Um, and then John had just worked with uh, Robert Forster, yeah. and he was like, what do you guys think of Robert Forster? For we the were like, like, absolutely. Yep, absolutely. And, and then, then Ian and I have been searching for a reason to work with Clifton Collins Jr. for the last three movies, and this was the perfect storm opportunity, so we got to him, and he came in to do uh, Mood. And then in, in came uh, Daniel Sanjata, Michael Vartan, Katie Lotz, James Lafferty. We've worked with James Lafferty. Um, Jeremy Rashford, Jeremy Rashford and, Dale Dickey. and Dale Dickey multiple times in a lot of our past films. Um, we love, 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 love all three of those people. Um, and we will continue to work with all three of those yeah, people. It was, every, as we go along here, we're building our cinema family and we keep having repeat yeah. offenders. I mean, it, it, cast and crew, you work with somebody who gives you everything they have every time and is, you know, is really a team player. Like, that's who you just keep bringing back. You're like, I can't wait to work with that person. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of action and violence in the film. You know, what was the most challenging scene to, to pull up? The challenge is definitely the action. I mean, uh, we didn't have a lot of money. Um, but we wanted to deliver. Yeah. So we wanted to do it practically. Yeah. Like, we didn't want to have a lot of special effects, and because, I don't know, you look at look something, you look at a movie like Dirty Harry that has all practical effects that was shot back in the 70s, and you look at other movies that were shot now with a lot of just effects or an effects package mm -hmm. that they put on for the shots, and it's just such a difference. I mean, yeah, there's an authenticity to really yeah. having, I mean, for the, for the big... You know, shootouts. If you have we, hundreds of millions of dollars or even tens of millions of dollars, you can really do a great effects shot yeah. movie. But when well, you're, the most cost effective way for us was yeah. like, okay, give them an AR fifteen with a full load. And although and we may real. have we may have had less takes because we were doing it practically, but it looked way better, you know. I mean some of the you know, obviously there's a big showdown at the end, there's a couple of you know car chases and stuff like that. And those that. all just take a lot of time. Yeah. So it's like reset, yeah. set up, reset, set up, and you can only do it like two times and you gotta move on because everything's blown to hell. Yeah, we only had a couple cars to do it, so we had to be very, yeah. very strategic in what we shot and the order we did it in. Yeah. Yes. So it was a lot of sort of reverse engineering on scenes where like, okay, we're gonna have to shoot this backwards because the car's just gonna be so messed up if we start here. So you have to kinda we shot it backwards basically is it? or we shot it in order, I'm sorry. Yeah. And then had to and then we actually had to shoot a couple scenes uh out of order so it those that's where the effects came work came in actually because yeah. we actually had an effects guy come in and cover up a couple bullet shots in a couple scenes there was no genius way to sort of maneuver away and shoot out because we had like five players in the big shootout so yeah that was those were the hardest parts trying really? to think our way through how to shoot them without having too much effects work that we couldn't afford later but this yeah. just making movies yeah i mean every day yeah. is going to throw endless challenges at you and you just have to stay calm yeah, in this eye of the storm. We always it say done. it's every, every day there's a big fire and 25 small fires, and you have to just, every day, you're like, okay, can't wait for that big fire to come, and let's start putting out the little ones so the big one comes. <laughs> yeah. And really, I mean, you think it's like this 
you know, you're out there on this artistic endeavor, and it's like, yeah. The, the, you're out there with like, a pipe and a yeah, cigar, like, and you're just enjoying life. And yeah, and half the Waxing job is, the whole time. Is problem solving, you know? It's half yeah. the job is problem solving. The other half is actually the creative endeavor. Yeah. So. So yeah, luckily there's two of us. So yeah. if a fire does erupt, it's like I'm gonna go handle the fire. You keep going. Yeah, it's, it's a really... ship sailing that way. I go put out the fire. But honestly, that's what that's what bringing uh, those people back, like the wonderful yeah. crew members. Like there's producers we love to work with, and there's you know first ads we love to work with, and I mean there's just there's yeah there's great people behind the scenes that help us with that, and we can count on. You're like, okay, this person's back there. I know we're gonna be okay. You know, they'll figure it out. So. And what have the reactions been so far? And what are you hoping to get out of being part of the London Film Festival? Um, our reactions have been wonderful. Very uh, Knock on wood awesome. that continues. Yeah, knock on that one. <laughs> but uh, it's been incredibly uh, wonderful reception. We started at South by Southwest, and we've done a few festivals in between. Um, I guess we're, we're just really excited to see what a UK audience is going to think of this. Yeah. Uh, because it's one thing to show it in our home country and it's another thing to bring it to another country and say, hey, do you get this? <laughs> so I guess uh, we're just hoping people enjoy it, you know? Yeah. Um, what, do you think there's a message there? What do you think people are going to take away? First, first and yeah. foremost, most for us, with, with making any movie is entertainment. Yeah. So yeah. are you going to be entertained? I hope so. That's what we yeah. strive for. Hopefully you're day. locked on it for yeah. the hour and a half that it is. Um, and the opportunity to think, oh, this is a redemption story. So, yeah. It's a man, a man who never gives up, even though it gets really bad, and he just keeps plodding forward and keeps trying to go. And we love that about characters that they sort of, you know, in the eye of, of, of high adversity, he's still pushing through and finding a way through it. So, Tenacious. Yeah, never, <laughs> so, never say die, never, never quit. Exactly. So, is it? <laughs> That's the message. Like global to. reasons. <laughs> global reasons for that. Yeah. Like we said, it's for right the kids. All right, you push through. Times are tough. <laughs> and can you briefly tell me about any projects you got in the pipeline? What's going to come? Yeah, next? we have a TV series we're actually working on with Octavia called Cries of the Children. Um, and funny enough, we started it. That's what we were talking with her with when she decided to help us put this together and came on board. And yeah. So now we're circling back. We're circling back, and we're back in the saddle on that. Yeah. Uh, but we're really excited to join to to endeavor into the series medium to, yeah, to be, work with that bigger canvas. It'd be really fun to work with like 10 hours, you know, have how we're going to tell this story over the course of 10 episodes or whatever it ends up being. Yeah. And of course, we have some features that we're trying to put together yeah. as well. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, best of luck and enjoy the film festival. Thank you very much. And the afternoon too. It's yep. wonderful. We're going to try to make how London English. proud. Yeah. <laughs> it's very English. Thank you.